a, my top rated book on confidence. It's called The Super You. I'm sending it to you. Physical book, free. Go to the link down there. You got it. Stayallday.com. Congratulations on tuning into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you have expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, we give you a huge dose of personal initiative. Yes, that's the go-getter energy that moves you to go make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. Putting all this together, you get the mindset, the method, the podcast known as work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day. Welcome to today's show. Today's topic is how to not be a commodity in life. How do you not become or remain, if you already are, a commodity in your life? Let me give a definition of this word commodity. Commodity is a basic good used in commerce that is interchangeable with other commodities of the same type. Now, I don't like using the word in the definition of the word. Commodities are often, as said in, on Wikipedia, commodities are often, I lost my spot there, commodities are often used as inputs in the production of other goods and services. The quality of a given commodity may differ slightly, but it is, it is, it is essentially uniform across producers. Wikipedia also says the market treats instances of the good as equivalent or nearly so with no regard to who produced them. So in other words, a commodity is something that if we were to just give it a title, such as basketball player, such as podcaster, such as Instagram user, such as author, such as photographer, such as computer manufacturer, a commodity means it doesn't matter what your company is, the name of your company, who you are, how much experience you have in the market, how many years you've been around, who your clients are, as long as your label is X, whatever that label is, anyone who fits that label is good enough. Anyone who fits that label, they'll take. Anyone who fits that label, we're putting all of you into the exact same box. And you know what happens when everybody gets put into the same box? When everybody is, is labeled as a commodity in certain things, you know what happens? Your price goes down. You get very little respect. You are undifferentiated by definition. When you're a commodity, there's no differentiation. You can't call your own shots. Your shots get called for you. And you pretty much have to accept whatever is handed to you, even if you don't like it, simply because you don't have the brand power. You don't have the name power to do anything about the situation. I thought of this topic here because I was reading this article about, I think this article came out maybe earlier this summer about cheerleaders in the NFL. It was mostly NFL cheerleaders were the, the subject of the story. I believe it was a New York Times article, how they get kind of mistreated as cheerleaders. And I'm not just talking about how much money they make. You can Google how much money cheerleaders make, but it's when they have to go to certain team functions, when they have to go out into the the uh, the tailgate area before NFL games, and sometimes the men get are verbally abusive. The men get a little bit too handsy with their hands. They get a little, little bit touchy-feely. The men kind of take, take some liberties dealing with these women that the women cheerleaders don't really like, but the environment is the yeah, the environment is that the cheerleader is not supposed to say anything. They're not supposed to cause a big fuss about it. They're not supposed to complain to the team. They're not supposed to yell at any of the men, like the fans or season ticket holders or guys who have luxury boxes who may become inappropriate verbally or physically. They're not supposed to say anything because they'll get fired. They'll get fired from their job as a cheerleader. And being that a cheerleading squad might have 100 women try out, but only 20 or so, 25, make the cheerleading team. These cheerleaders are a commodity. They know it. The team knows it. They know that the cheerleaders know that if they complain and they get fired, they can easily be replaced by another woman who just barely missed the cut of making that cheerleading squad. They're commodities. All right? They are the very definition of commodities. And because they're commodities, which is why I'm talking about this here today, they can be treated the way that they're treated. They can be paid the little amount of money that they're paid. They can be talked to the way that they're talked to. And they can be kind of bullied and intimidated into not saying anything about this mistreatment simply because they know they can be easily replaced. And there's nothing unique about any one of them individually that makes them stand out that they can start commanding their own situation or naming their price. Metaphorically speaking, let's think somebody like LeBron James. LeBron James would be the exact opposite of a commodity and being that you can't really replace him with anybody else. He can tell you what the terms are going to be. He can dictate the situation to you, even though he is technically the employee and the owners are going to listen to him simply because he has so much power. He has such a strong brand name. And there are a few in every industry 
every industry, whether that's sports and we're talking about people, we could be talking about products. You could talk dog trainers, stock brokers, lawyers, supermodels, for example, is something that's the exact opposite of a commodity as opposed to a quote unquote regular model who's walking the, walking the catwalk and nobody even knows their name. So the commodity is a person who kind of gets handed whatever they get handed and you have to accept it because you have no other choice. You don't have the power to, to call your shot or negotiate as opposed to the brand name who can call all of their shots and other people have to negotiate against themselves in order to even get your attention. This is how you do not become a commodity in life because if you do want to be a commodity, you don't need to listen to this. You'll probably just be one by default. Point number one. Today's topic, how to not become a commodity. You cannot just accept what is handed to you. Simple as that. If you don't want to be a commodity, your number, the first step that you take, the very first thing you start doing, and you can start doing this right now on the spot, is do not just blatantly accept, plainly accept everything that is handed to you. Every proposition that is given to you, you don't have to just take it. Every time someone makes you an offer, you don't have to say yes immediately. Every time someone says this is the way it's going to be, you don't have to accept that. You can say, no, I don't want it to be that way. I need it to be a little bit different. This is the first way that you become not a commodity. Because even if you happen to have commodity level skills, right? Commodity level talent and commodity level experience at this point, you can separate yourself just by the fact that you spoke up. Because people are going to look at you like, wait, what? <laughs> huh? <laughs> What'd you say? You're not going to just accept this. It's not going to just go down the way that we said it's going to go down. That alone is going to make you different from everybody else who just plainly accepts things, right? You can agree with that, right? Just think about it. James Altucher, who has a, a podcast that I listen to, I mentioned this on my favorite podcast episode. He says that as soon as anyone calls him and asks him to do anything, whether that's write an article, be on their podcast, be an interview subject for some, some article that they may be writing, come on their TV show, come speak at my conference, whatever it is. Anytime someone asks James for anything, he immediately goes into negotiation mode because he's, his, his logic is, look, they're asking me for something. They want something from me. So I'm going to get what I want to get out of them. This is how business works, people. This is not being greedy. This is not being exploitative or anything like that. It's business. Business is the exchange of resources between entities. Somebody wants something from you, whether that's your intellectual property. They want to know your story. They want your product or your service. They want something from you. They have to give you something and you can choose what it is that they give you. Now, if people are choosing for you what they're going to give you in order to get what they want out of you. You are a commodity. That's the definition of a commodity. People tell you what you're going to get in exchange for you giving them what you have. Now, when you start telling other people what they're going to give you instead of them telling you for what you have, that's when you get out of the space of being a commodity. If you don't want to be a commodity or when you're not a commodity, let me tell you what happens. I should have told you this, this is the top of the episode. What happens? I just want to sell you on the idea of not being a commodity. First of all, you can name your own price. And I think everybody in here likes the idea of naming their own price when it comes to making money. All right, even if money is not your number one driver, it could be all the way at the bottom of your list. It'd be better if you could name your own price than having someone name your price for you, right? I think so. That's number one. Number two, you are a person that people come and seek out. You're not just one of a million and you just happen to be the one that gets picked that day. People come and seek you out. Instead of saying, all right, we'll just take any any woman who's five foot four, they say, no, we want, we want uh, Jessica Johnson. We don't want anyone else. No, we don't want her over there. We won't want her over there. We want Jessica Johnson. Uh, we don't want just any five foot four woman. We want Jessica. Go get Jessica. How much? Pay it. We want her. You become a person that people are seeking out. And I think even again, if you're not, you don't have to be the most egotistical person. You could be the least egotistical person on the planet. I think we all enjoy being valued. All right. That somebody's calling our name and saying, we want you. And when someone wants you and they specifically want you, they will name, they will pay whatever price it is that you name. So those are two reasons right there off the top. And you'll hear the rest in between the lines of what I'm saying in the rest of this episode of why not being a commodity is the place that you want to be. So number one point, don't just accept what people offer you. They want you. All right. People are asking for you negotiate. You control the terms, at least somewhat. You start negotiating, asking for what you want, saying, I want this, or if I'm going to do this, I'll give you this. If I give up this, you give up that. You just got to be willing to ask the question. Don't be so afraid of losing. And there's another thing that happens when you're not a commodity. You are not afraid of losing an opportunity because the opportunity is not them. The opportunity is you. Let me say that one again. When you are not a commodity, you are not afraid of losing an opportunity. See, commodities are afraid of losing opportunities. The cheerleaders who were complaining, they, a lot of them were complaining anonymously or the few that would give their names were, cheer, were no longer cheerleaders. 
because the ones who are still cheerleaders, if they were to say something and their name gets out in that article and the team finds out about it, they're going to get fired. And they'll never be able to cheer anywhere again in the NFL. And they don't want that because they value the job so much for whatever reason. When you are not a commodity, you get to name your price and you get to call the shots in the situation and they're asking for you so you can control the terms of the situation and whatever they ask you to do if you say no i'm not doing it they're usually not going to walk away they'll negotiate or they'll just say you know what you're right you don't have to do that because they want you lebron james says look you need to sign my friend to a, a 10 million dollar contract this year if you don't do it i'm not signing with your team even if the team hates that player that lebron james says sign they're going to sign him why because they know they get lebron in exchange for doing that you understand when you are a commodity you can't do that <laughs> and the player that they sign may very well be a commodity but because of his relationship with lebron this is a relationship topic he's able to leverage that into something else all right so when you are not a commodity you get to call shots you get to negotiate and you're not worried about them whoever them is walking away just because you ask for something that they may not want to do they'll do things that they don't want to do if they want you bad enough and but you can't be a commodity if they're never going to want you bad enough if you're a commodity because they could just say or oh, forget you we'll just go to the next person and give them exactly what we're offering they're going to take it and we'll just keep moving like that so number two today's topic is how to not be a commodity step outside of what's accepted and represent something that isn't yet known now, this is a tough one this is the building the brand this is the personal brand this is you representing yourself in a way that is unique you standing out from the crowd you doing something that may not yet be accepted and making it become something that is accepted just by the energy that you're putting behind it stepping outside of what is accepted to represent something that isn't yet known isn't yet done hasn't been seen before people may be looking at you funny this is a hard one to do because you're unknown and you're not yet accepted so it may take take some time for you to get here now this is something i heard uh seth golden write about in a post that he did many years ago that i liked i saved it because i liked it so much but he said there's a leap between going from commodity to non-commodity there's a leap that you have to make. It's kind of like leaping from, you ever seen that meme where it's like leaping from one cliff to the other cliff, but in between there's that big gap that if you miss that jump, you're gonna fall all the way down and die. There's a leap that you gotta take between the two. You can't walk from one cliff to the other, you gotta jump. And that jump, while you're in the air of that jump, you have a lot of uncertainty. You have a lot of maybe nobody calling your phone. You have a lot of maybe nobody returning your calls. You have a whole lot of people not really sure what to make of you you got a lot of people giving you funny looks or saying uh okay i never heard of that what are you doing uh explain that to me again you get a whole lot of that while you're in the mode of jumping from commodity to non-commodity but once you make it to the other side and you do have to leap to get there once you make it to the other side now everybody accepts okay yeah we know who who jessica johnson is oh we know who she's about okay she's representing something new and now you know what happens once you make that leap from being commodity to non-commodity now you get a whole lot of people also doing the same thing that you did because now you made it into a thing that's normal now it becomes a thing that anybody can do now a whole bunch of people doing it so you got to be careful not to become a commodity again you got to move on to the next thing before everybody else jumps on it. so this is a hard one because it may take some time to get there it may take some time for that leap so this leap is not like a normal human leap where you jump and you know less than one second later you're back on the ground this is a jump that you got to make. You're going to be in the air for a while, kind of in this. You're going to be up in the air, kind of like they say. You know, when people say something is up in the air, what does that mean? It means we kind of don't know. There's a lot of unsureness about this. There's a lot of uncertainty in the situation. That's how people are going to be about you. That's how you may even be about you for a period of time. But once you land on that other side and you made that leap, now everybody's going to accept you and everything gets a hundred times easier at that point but you have to be willing to jump from one cliff to a next to the next in order to make that happen and you got to be willing to deal with the uncertainty and discomfort of being up in the air quote unquote metaphorically up in the air for that period of time until you land on the other side of that cliff number three today's topic is how to not be a commodity in life to not be a commodity people you must be willing to turn down reject and or walk away from what will be presented to you as quote unquote opportunities purchase your tracks today i want to say that one again this is a this is the toughest pill to swallow for anyone who wants to go from being commodity to non-commodity so i want to say it again you must be willing to turn down reject and or walk away from situations that will be presented to you as quote unquote opportunities see i've learned this in the business world the being in the athletic world for so long i didn't learn it as early as some of you may have learned it but in the business world i learned this that when people don't want to offer you money they offer you opportunity quote unquote 
<laughs> All right, this is a great opportunity to get in front of this audience of XYZ type of people. That's what they say when they don't have any money. All right, <laughs> we're gonna give you an opportunity. You're gonna get seen. We're gonna give you some exposure. That's the other thing. Exposure and opportunity. I know there are some people in this audience who know exactly. Listen, tweet me at Dre all day if you know what I'm talking about. If anybody in the congregation understands what I'm saying, please, please give me an amen on Twitter at Dre all day. This is what happens when people don't want to pay you money. And if money happens, usually when we work, we get money, right? That's the, that's the, that's the most acceptable means of exchange. People are going to present you opportunities that they're going to call it an opportunity. But to you, you're like, wait a minute, what's the opportunity? I'm not making any money. I'm not getting what I want in exchange for what I'm bringing to the table. I know what y'all want from me, but what I want from you, you're not offering it to me, but you're still calling it an opportunity. See, when you're not a commodity, you got to be willing to walk away from those. You got to be willing to tell people, no, I'm good. Now, there was this conference I was going to speak at in October of this year. I believe it was in Orlando. I'm not going to say the name of the companies. I'm not trying to bash these individuals, but I talked to this guy on the phone for about 30 minutes and he's selling me on the idea of speaking there like, yeah, man, we had this person and this person. He's dropping these names and they did this and this and this. No, but they came and they did like a, a breakout session one year and the next year they came back. They did a keynote and it's this, this, and this. And I'm like, all right, it sounds good. I'll, I'll come there and speak there. And he said, all right, after you put in your information, because it was like this form, you put in your information, just email me and tell me and I'll make sure I, I push it through. Basically, he was telling me that you're going to be one of our speakers speakers just let me know you know because i i sold him he sold me so we're like all right we good so i get the information back from them about a month ago this is no it's about early june i get information back from them. they like congratulations you're going to be a speaker at the conference i already knew i would be but then this is what they tell me not only are they not going to pay me they tell me i got to pay for a ticket to go to their conference i said are you out of your goddamn mind huh? <laughs> that's what i said when i read it and i wasn't going to do it and i ended up emailing the guy and saying yo you didn't say anything about that and we had our conversation and he didn't he didn't uh, apologize. All he said was, well, look, he, he went back to the opportunity piece. He came back to the opportunity thing. Well, it's an opportunity. You'll get this exposure and this and that. And that, that was the end of the conversation. I haven't spoken to that guy since. And Purchase no, I will not be speaking today. at that conference. Why? Because I ain't no commodity. Now, I know, listen, they will easily find somebody to take my spot. They probably already found me. Okay. But I'm all right with that. See, you got to be OK with walking away from certain quote unquote opportunities that aren't what you want. If you don't want to be a commodity, if you want to be a commodity, you want to be treated like one. Listen, just accept whatever they give you. But when you become willing to walk away, that's when you can start getting what it is you want. But most people are not willing to walk away. Most people will not walk away from what is presented to them as a quote unquote opportunity, even when it's really not an opportunity. It is for the person who's offering it, not for the person who's receiving it. Most people won't walk away. And this is why most people are commodities in life. So if you don't want to be like most people, you got to decide what you're willing to walk away from. Decide where your line is, your line of delineation. Uh, I'm not going this far. I'm not doing that. I'm walking away from this. You got to know where that line is for you, not for anyone else, but for you. Let's recap today's topic. How to not be a commodity, which is defined as a basic good using common that is interchangeable with other items of the same type most often uses inputs in the production of goods and services the quality may differ slightly but is essentially uniform the market treats instances of commodities as nearly equivalent with no regard as to who exactly they are you don't want to be that okay you don't want to be person x you don't want to be brand x number one you cannot just accept what they hand to you. James Altucher said, as soon as someone asks me for something, I immediately go into negotiation mode. Be willing to negotiate. Be willing to ask for what you want and stand on your ask in order to get what you want. When you are not a commodity, people will give you what you want, but you got to be firm enough to stand on it when you actually ask for it. Number two, step outside of what is accepted and what is commonly known and do something that is not yet known today. this is hard because you're going to be in the air for a while making that leap from one cliff to another cliff are you willing to have that uncertainty can you deal with that uncertainty for long enough to make it into something that is accepted make yourself into something that's accepted to where you're no longer a commodity most people are not i'm just be honest with you so maybe this is for you maybe it ain't number three to not be a commodity you must be willing to turn down reject and or walk away from what others will present to you as an opportunity that's really not an opportunity for you because you already know what your line is you know what you want you know what your business is about you know what you want yourself to represent is not an opportunity for you they're going to try to sell you as it being an opportunity but it's really not you got to be willing to walk away from it reject it turn it down and tell them you got to bring me something better to the table or we can't be at this table are you willing to have that uncomfortable conversation with an opportunity if you are not, you may be stuck being a commodity, but don't say nobody ever told you. Work on your game. DreAllDay.com.